Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Today I'm going to share my research about how to attack Microsoft Exchange servers in Active Directory with only a normal domain account. I'm Tian Zeding. I'm from Tencent Security Xiangwu Lab. I'm focusing on Active Directory security, red team operations, and web application security. I have reported some vulnerabilities to several well-known companies such as Microsoft, Apple, and Google. I have also shared my research at Black Hat Azure, a Black Hat USA Arsenal. Here is the agenda of this talk. First, I will give a brief overview of the attack surface of Microsoft Exchange Server. Next, I will share two new vulnerabilities. I will show you how I can take over any Exchange mailbox and how I achieve RCE on Exchange servers. And then, I will detail a new method to help you perform lateral movements and escalate your privileges to domain admins after Exchange Server RCE. You may ask, why I choose Exchange Server as a research target? Microsoft Exchange Server is one of the most famous mail servers in the world, especially for enterprise users. It stores large amounts of sensitive coverage information, such as emails, email attachments, contacts, calendars of all users in your company. In emails, there may be something that attackers are very interested in, such as business plans, work arrangements, customer information, and even plan text passwords. What's more, Exchange Server is highly integrated with Microsoft Active Directory. Exchange Server uses Active Directory for user authentication and Mailbox user user growth management. And it also stores almost all configuration in Active Directory. Each Exchange Server must communicate with Active Directory to retrieve information about the recipients and information about other Exchange Servers. So Active Directory must be available for Exchange to function correctly. There are also some high-privileged AD objects along with Exchange servers. Usually, you need to use enterprise admins to install your first Exchange server in your organization. So, there may be enterprise admins sanctions on Exchange servers. If an attacker compromised your Exchange servers, they may also have ability to compromise the enterprise admins. In all the version of Exchange servers, the Exchange Windows Permission Group has write DHCL rights on the domain, of that, the domain object. If an attacker compromised the Exchange server, he could grant himself this sync rights and then escalate his privileges to domain domains. So Exchange server not only stores a large amount of sensitive coverage information, but also an effective way to ex escalate privileges to domain domains. So it has become a high-value target for both APT groups and red teams. Before hunting for vulnerabilities, we should have an overview of, of Exchange Server architecture and attack surface, and pay more attention to those attack services that are ignored by other researchers. As a mail server, Exchange Server has many client access services, such as some Exchange HTTPS endpoints. Some traditional mail services like POP3 IMEP, SMTP, and unified messaging service for telephone. These exposed services are favorites of attackers, especially the web service. There are lots of exchange endpoints available to attackers, such as OWA and ACP, which you can access directly with a browser, and other endpoints like AWS and API, etc which are mainly used by Outlook. In the past few months, some high-risk vulnerabilities in Exchange Server have been exposed. Most of them mainly touch vulnerable ASP.NET code running on the IS server. But the architecture of Exchange Server is complicated. Is there any other attack service in Exchange Server? In my opinion, the architecture of Exchange Server also contains the IS server. Based on my past web security research experience, 
It's a very common situation that the web server was misconfigured by the web application developers. So maybe there will be some misconfiguration on the Exchange IS Server 2. And Windows Server is also an attack service. There are some services are available to attackers in Active Directory environments. Exchange Server also supports load balancing architecture. Uh, there may be more than one Exchange Service in Active Directory, which may also bring new attack surfaces. And Exchange Server is highly integrated with the Active Directory. This may also bring new attack surface to both Exchange Servers and Active Directory. I will discuss this attack service in the following talk. Next, let's talk about the story of how to take over arbitrary exchange mailbox with only a normal domain account. When I was researching the exchange server, I found many ECP operations and exchange PowerShell command lines support users to use UNC pass for fail access. So, this means if we have access to this ACP operations or this PowerShell command lines, we can trigger an SMB connection from Exchange Server to an SMB server. Next, we we'll need to figure out which user's credential will be used in the SMB connection. Exchange Server uses a system account to run all its services. The system account is a local account. In Active Directory, more process running with the system, system account wants to perform network authentication. The credential of the machine account will be used for the authentication. As shown in the Wireshark, the Exchange Server will use the machine account Exchange $1 to perform NTLM authentication in the SMB connection. So what can we do with the SMB connection and the NTLM authentication? How useful is that? Let's talk about the NTLM protocol firstly. NTLM is a very old authentication protocol in Windows system, but it is well, uh, widely deployed in Microsoft ecosystem in order to maintain compatibility with legacy clients and servers. And NTLM still plays an important role in Active Directory authentication. NTLM is an embedded protocol which means it can be embedded in other protocols which, needs, which need authentication functionalities, such as NTRM over SMB, NTRM over HTTP, etc. And there is a famous attack about NTRM called NTRM Relay Attack. It's really old, but very useful in writing mode operations. The NTRM Relay Attack works like this. If the victim is somehow tricked to into accessing a malicious SMB server hosted by the attacker. The victim will authenticate it to the attacker. It will say, hey, let me log in to the SMB server. The attacker can relay the message from the victim to the attacked target and say, hey, I want to log in to the vulnerable service. The attacked target will send an NTLM challenge message to the attacker and say, hey, here's a challenge stream Please hash it with your password. The attacker relays this message to the victim. Hey, victim, here is a challenge from a targeted target. Hash it with your password. Then the victim uses his password to calculate a challenge response and send it to the attacker. The attacker relays the challenge response directly to the targeted target, and the targeted target check whether the challenge response is correct with the netlog on protocol. Finally, the attacker successfully logs into the vulnerable service on the targeted target as domain backslash victim. If the victim has some special privileges on the targeted target, the attacker can do something sensitive, can do some sensitive operations with the victim's identity, even RCE. So now we can trigger NTLM authentication of the Exchange Server machine account. Can we perform NTLM relay attack? There are some preconditions for NTLM relay attack. Firstly, we need to figure out are there any vulnerable services on Exchange Server as the target of NTLM relay attacks? Then does the Exchange Server machine account 
has any special privileges on these services. S16 Server is highly integrated with Microsoft Active Directory. There are many exchange endpoints for NTLM authentication, such as the MAPI, EWS, RPC, Auto Discover, etc. Some of these endpoints are used by Outlook, which means that if an attacker can log into these endpoints, it can perform almost any operations like a normal Outlook. Can we relay NTLM authentication to these endpoints? If the victim and the attacked target are the same machine, the NTLM relay attack is also called NTLM reflection. If there is only one exchange server in the Active Directory, can we perform the NTLM reflection attack? Can we relay the NTLM authentication of the machine account Exchange 1 dollar back to Exchange 1? The answer is of course no. The patch of CVE 2018-8581 removed disable loopback check configuration from Exchange Server. So, NTLM reflection is disabled on Exchange Server. But what if there is more than one Exchange Server in the AD? In my red team operations, it's a very common situation in enterprise environments that there are more than one Exchange Server in the Active Directory because of the need for load balancing. So we can relate the NTLM authentication from one exchange server to another, but there is a protection called EPA. What is EPA? EPA is Extended Protection for Authentication. It's a protection to defend against NTLM relay attacks. For SSL connection, there is a protection called channel banning in EPA. If channel banning is enabled in a web server, the client needs to calculate a channel binding token based on the TLS certificate of the HTTPS server and the user's NT hash. And as a token to the NTLM auth message, if the channel binding token is wrong, the server will not allow the client to log in. Attackers cannot forge a channel binding token without knowing the user's NT hash. Channel binding token in NTLM authentication over SMB are all zero by default. So if APA is enabled, we can't we can't relay NTLM authentication to exchange server endpoints. But fortunately, APA is disabled on this exchange endpoints by default. Usually, most machine accounts in Active Directory are low privileged accounts. Thus, the exchange server machine accounts. Exchange Server $1 has any special privileges on these endpoints? The answer is yes. Exchange Machine Account has an extended right called MS Exchange API Token Serialization. As the output of the get ID permission command shows, all members of the Exchange Server group have token serialization rights on all Exchange servers in the Active Directory. The Exchange Machine Accounts are the members of the Exchange Server Group. This means the Exchange Machine Accounts have these special extended rights. For the AWS endpoint, if there is a serialized security contest field in an XML HTTP request, it will try to create security access tokens based on the value of this field. If the client user has token serialization rights, it can use serialized security contest to force AWS to impersonate other exchange users, which means exchange machine accounts can impersonate other exchange users on AWS endpoint. An XML request with serialized security context is like this. You need to set the SID of the user you want to impersonate in serialized security context. And if you have a domain account in the Active Directory, a domain user or a domain computer account. You can easily read all domain users' SID through its LDAP query. You can also use Simpact Exchanger.py to read all active mailboxes and corresponding users' SIDs. After creating the user SIDs, you can set user SIDs in the 
serialize the security context and impersonate any external user you want. So what can we do after logging in to the AWS endpoint as any external user? AWS is used by Outlook for Mac OS. So AWS supports almost operations uh, supported by Outlook, uh, such as find, fo uh, find folder can be used to find all predefined and custom custom folders of mailbox users. Find item can get emails in these folders, and get item can read mails content, uh, email contents. So if you can relay NTM and the location of exchange machine account to AWS, you can impersonate any exchange users and use this AWS API to read emails, download email attachments, send emails as any exchange users. As we discussed before, we can trigger SME connections with some ECB operations or some PowerShell command lines, but all these methods are required high privileged users. We can trigger and can we trigger NTLM authentication with only a normal domain user without any special privileges? The print bug can do this. Typically found there is an RPC function called RPC remote find first printer change notification in the print RPC. And this function is accessible by all domain users and domain computers. So any domain users or machine accounts in the Active Directory can make a request to the printer server and set their PSZ local machine to a UNC pass. The printer server is running with the system account. It will immediately connect to the UNC pass and authenticate it to it with the machine account. So we can make a request to exchange server and force their exchange, and force their exchange machine account to authenticate it to us. So let's chain them all together. The xlab backslash attacker is a normal domain user without any special privileges. I can talk to exchange one with print bug. Hey, exchange one, authenticate it to me as exchange one dollar account. Then the exchange one establish an SME connection with a malicious SMB server hosted by the attacker and send NTRM authentication message to it. Attacker directly relays the NTRM authentication to the AWS endpoint on Exchange 2 and successfully logs in as Exchange 1 dollar. Exchange 1 dollar has token serialization rights on the AWS, so attacker can impersonate any Exchange users, which means the attacker can read mails, download attachments, send emails as any Exchange user. I created a tool based on Exchange Relay X to exploit this vulnerability, and here's a demo. There are two Exchange servers in the Active Directory. The attacker sets Exchange 2 as the attacked target. The attacker can trick a CB connection from the Exchange 1 to the attacker's machine with print bug. Next, the attacker can dump all mailboxes and user IDs. The attacker tries to take over victim's mailbox. The attacker can read victim's emails. Download the email attachment.
The emails read by the attacker are the same as the emails in the victim's outlook. And the content of the attachment is also the same. Next, the attacker try to take over administrator's mailbox. The attacker can read administrator's mail, uh, emails. Next, the attacker tries to send an email to victim as the administrator. The victim successfully received the email sent by the attacker. Let's talk about the patches. The April patch breaks the exploit chain because the patch no longer allows a machine accounts to log in to any endpoints. And the vulnerability finally was fixed on Patch Tuesday in July and assigned a single number CVE 2021-33768. In conclusion, if you have compromised a normal domain account, a domain user or machine account, and if there is more than one external server in the Active Directory, you can take over any external user smell box. So, are there any chance to achieve RCE on external server with similar attack methods? When external server was originally installed, it created a high privileged group named Exchange. Trusted subsystem group in Active Directory. All members in this group have local administrator privileges on all external servers in a domain. And external server and machine accounts are members of this high privileged group. If we can release anti arm authentication of external server machine accounts to some remote management service running on Windows, maybe we can achieve RCE. Someone might say that maybe we can relay NTLM authentication to the SMB and do something like PSEXEC. But unfortunately, SMB signing is enabled by default on Exchange Server. So we can't relay NTLM authentication to SMB of another Exchange Server. There are also some other remote management protocols like WinRM. WinRM also supports NTLM authentication, but signing and installing are all enabled on its HTTP service, and the channel binding is enabled in its HTTPS channel. So, relay NTLM application to WinRM is also impossible. MSRPC is a remote produce call protocol implemented by Microsoft based on DC RPC. MSRPC supports multiple RPC types. The most common RPC types that can be accessed remotely over the network are NCS, ICACNMP and NCACNIPTCP. Can we relate to NTLM over SMB to Microsoft RPC? NCACNMP uses SMB as the transport uh, protocol. Obviously, it cannot be our attack target. NCACNIPTCP uses port 135 and a dynamic port assigned by the EPM to accept connections from RPC clients. There are many RPC interfaces available for us. RPC clients can set the auth type to RPC C Austin, uh, WNT to use NTLM SSP to authenticate to this RPC interfaces. Some security researchers have disclosed some RPC interfaces that are affected by the NTLM relay attack, such as the CVE 2020-1113. If the NTLM relay vulnerability exists in the text, a task scheduler service, an attacker can relay NTLM authentication to task scheduler RPC and finally 
SQL commands remotely. CVE 2021-1678 is an NTLM relay vulnerabilities exist in the Print Explorer service. An attacker can relay NTLM authentication to Print Explorer RPC and finally can write any files on the remote system. DCOM is built on top of MS RPC, so how about DCOM? Is there an NTLM relay vulnerability in DCOM? Let's take a look. A common DCOM connection goes like this. A client firstly connects to the port 135 on the DCOM server and sends an NTLM authentication to it. After a successful login, the client will make a remote pretty instance request, and the request includes both the class ID and the interface ID. Then the remote service control manager on the DCOM server becomes responsible for the DCOM object activation. If the remote object is well activated, an interface pointer, OBGIF, will be sent back to the client. The OBGIF contains a field called string bindings, and the DCOM client can reach, can reach the object explorer with the string bindings. The client will then connect it to the IP and port according to the string bindings and send an NTLM authentication to the server. After a successful authentication, the client can send object RPC requests to use the remote common object. The MS RPC supports several authentication levels. The RPC C Authent level connect authentication level indicates that the RPC connection does need to be encrypted and signed. And the signing and installing are not post enabled on the account servers. The authentication level of an RPC connection can be completely determined by the uh, DCOM client. So attackers can also set the RPC auth level to RPC auth level connect to avoid encrypting and signing and relay NTLM authentication over SMB to DCOM. Now we can relay NTLM authentication to DCOM. We need to find a common object to help us execute commands on the remote system. As a well-known technology based on DCOM is WMI, it allows administrators to manage remote systems and execute commands on the remote systems. But the protocol of WMI is a bit complicated. There are also some simple common objects, and all of them can be used to execute commands on the remote system. Here we choose MMC 20 application to help us execute commands on remote system after a successful NTRM relay. MMC 20 application has an API called execute shell command, which can be used to execute command on remote system. Why finally choose to use MMC 20 to execute command compared to shell window and shell browser window? MMC 20 application is still available on latest Windows Server 2019. And compared to WMI, WMI requires authenticating to too many RPC interfaces, but MMC 20 only requires twice NTLM authentications. Just like the workshop shows, the MMC 20 needs to authenticate to the iSystem Activator interface and the iDispatch interface. It's friendly to the exploit development, so MMC 20 is the best choice for us. So, let's chant them all together. The xlab backslash attacker is a normal domain user without any special privileges. I can talk to the exchange one with print bug. Hey, exchange one, authenticate to me as exchange one dollar account. Then the exchange one sends NTM authentication messages to the malicious SMB server hosted, hosted by the attacker. And there can be multiple NTM authentications in an SMB connection. So the attacker doesn't need to send a second print file request to trigger a second NTRM authentication. Attacker can directly relay first NTRM authentication to the DCOM iSystem Activator interface on the Exchange 2 and use create remote instance to active the remote MMC20 application common object and relay the second NTRM authentication to the DCOM iDispatch interface and find the SQL shell command and invoke it to execute commands remotely. Here's the demo. There's no calculator process on Exchange 1. And there's no calculator process on Exchange 2.
first, start attacking exchange 2. Attacker can trigger an SAD connection from exchange 1 to the attacker with print bug. Now, the calculator has been executed on exchange 2. Next, let's start attacking exchange 1. Attacker can trigger a SAP connection from exchange 2 to attacker. And calculator has been executed on exchange 1. Actually, this is a vulnerability exists in Windows DCOM, not in the Exchange Server, but we can use it to attack Exchange Servers. This vulnerability has been fixed and assigned CVE 2021-26414. But after installing the patch, you need to manually to set require integrity activation authentication level to 1 in the registry to enable the protection for DCOM. This protection will first enable RPCC OS level PKT integrity. After Q4 2021, this protection will be enabled by default on Windows. In conclusion, if you have compromised a normal domain account, a domain user, or a machine account, and if there is more than one external server in the Active Directory, uh, you can execute any commands remotely on this exchange server. RCE is only the beginning for Red Teams. In this part, I will introduce a new method to help you perform natural movements and privilege escalation to domain admin after RCE on Exchange Server. When Exchange Server was originally installed, it configures and grants itself extensive Active Directory permissions. These permissions provide necessary access that Exchange Server may ever need. There are some privilege escalation methods with these permissions, such as abusing RESDSA on the domain object and abusing DNS limits group. But these attack passes had been fixed in 2019. There are also some lateral movement methods, such as abusing force change password rights on the main users to force change the users' passwords. But attackers cannot recover the victim users' original passwords because they don't know the plan attack passwords of the victims. Attackers could also abuse the right DSL rights on the mail users and set SPN on the mail users and perform the cobrasting attack. But sometimes it's hard to brute force passwords if there is a complex password policy. I think that there are no easy to use lateral movement methods and no uh, privileged escalation methods after Exchange Server RCE. So let's introduce a new one. Let's introduce the exploit primitives firstly. Suppose the attacker already compromised the exchange server. He, has, he can fully control the exchange server machine account exchange $1. He can dump the anti-hash of the exchange $1 and do anything as exchange $1. The exchange $1 is a member of exchange trusted subsystem. And exchange, exchange trusted subsystem is a member of central Windows permission. Exchange Windows permission can add member to group policy, create owners, and exchange trusted subsystems. So the attacker can add users to these three high privileged, high privileged groups. The members of Exchange Windows permission group can create new organizational units in Active Directory. And the members of group policy create owners group can create new group policy objects in Active Directory. The members of Exchange Windows Permission group has write distinguish the name, write name, write name, and delete object writes on domain users and domain computers. With this right, Exchange Windows Permission group can, re can move domain users or domain computers to other containers. Next, Let's design a new lateral movement method. First, 
the attacker can add himself to Exchange Trusted Subsystem Group and the Group Policy Court Owners Group. Then he will get the same permissions as these two high privileged groups. Then the attacker can create an evil OU and an evil GPO. Next, he can create a GP link from the evil OU to the evil GPO. This allows the policies in the evil GPO to take effort on evil OU. And the attacker can add a user immediate task to the evil GPO, which is used to uh, execute attacker's commands. Here is, uh, here is proper calculation. Then the attacker can move the victim user to the evil OU and just wait for the group policy to refresh. When the group policy is refreshed, the victim will pop a calculator. The waiting time will be longer than the GPU refresh time because GPU uh, group policy engine need to sync the OU information of the victim with the active directory firstly. After the attack, the attacker can move the victim to his original OU and remove the evil OU and the evil GPO. I didn't find a right team tool that can manipulate GPO remotely, so I created a new one called Sharp GPO. You can find it in my GitHub. Uh, we can use Sharp GPO to create all your GPO GPO links in the Active Directory. Uh, we can use Sharp GPO abuse to create malicious group policies such as user immediate tasks and computer immediate tasks. Here's the demo. I will show how the attacker moves laterally to the victim and pops calculator as the victim user. The computer on the left side is the victim. The computer on the right side is the attacker. Now the attacker is a member of the main users. The attacker can add himself to high privilege groups if he has compromised exchange one dollar. Now the attacker has been added to these two high privileged groups. And then the attacker can create an evil OU and an evil GPO. And link the evil GPO to the evil OU. and add a malicious user immediate task to the evil GPO. Next, move the victim to the evil OU. And just wait for the group policy to refresh or wait for the victim to log in again. When the victim logs in successfully, the group policy will be refreshed. And the calculator is executed. After the attack, the attacker can move the victim to his original OU and remove the evil OU and evil GPO. You may ask, can we escalate our privileges to domain admins? Can we move the domain admins to the evil OU? The answer is we can't because of the admin SD holder. Admin SD holder provides a permission template for the protected accounts and groups. All domain admins have the admin account attribute set to one, which means they are protected by, uh, protected by admin SD holder. When a new domain admin is created in the Active Directory, the exchange does have permissions to move it to the evil OU. But about uh, 60 uh, minutes later, the permission will be mo removed because of the admin SD holder. So we can't apply a malicious growth policies to domain admins. Unfortunately, the computer rejects in domain controllers group 
are not protected by admin and still holder. So the attacker can create a new OU, a new GPO, and create a GP link as before. Next, add a malicious computer immediate task to the evil computer GPO. Then move the domain controller to the evil computer OU and just wait for the growth policy to refresh on the domain controller. When growth policy is refreshed, a calculator will be executed on the domain controller with the system accounts. Now, the attacker can fully control the domain controller and, and the entire Active Directory. If you are worried about uh, that moving the domain controller to a new OU will affect the functionality of it, you can apply the original OU default domain controller policy to evil computer OU. After, after the attack, the attacker can move the domain controller to its original OU and remove the evil OU and the evil GPO. Here's the demo. I will show how the attacker moves laterally to the domain controller and pops calculators with the system account. The computer on the left side is the domain controller. Now there is no calculator process on the domain controller. Next, we run a while loop to check whether the calculator is executed. The computer on the right side is the attacker. Now the attacker is a member of domain users. Attacker can add himself to high privileged groups if he has compromised exchange one dollar. Now the attacker has been added to these two high-privileged groups. Next, the attacker can create an evil computer OU and an evil computer GPO. and link the evil computer GPO to the evil computer OU. Next, add a malicious computer immediate task to the evil computer GPO. and move the domain controller to the evil computer OU. And just wait for the growth policy to refresh on the domain controller. About 30 minutes later, the calculate is executed with the system account. After the attack, the attacker can move the domain controller to its original OU and remove the evil computer OU and evil computer GPO. Here's the mitigation. You can switch your exchange server to Active Directory's delete permissions model. This model effectively limits uh, exchange rights in Active Directory. Attackers cannot use the methods we talked about to perform lateral movement and privilege escalation. Conclusion and takeaways. For red teams in this talk, I disclosed two new exchange server vulnerabilities. The first one can result in arbitrary mailbox takeover. Attackers can read mails, uh, download attachments, send emails, etc. as any exchange user. The second one can lead to remote code execution on exchange servers. I also introduced a new method to help your lateral movement and help you Escalate your privileges to domain admins after exchange RCE.
For blueprints, you need to patch all your vulnerable exchange servers and the Windows servers your exchange servers are running on. And if possible, switch your exchange server to Active Directory Switch Permissions model to prevent attackers from escalating privileges. This checked anti army usage as much as possible to prevent some anti army related attacks is also useful. Thanks to all these security researchers and their amazing work, their work inspired me a lot. And also thanks to MSRC for their hard work in fixing these vulnerabilities. Okay, thanks for your listening.